Hi, I'm Brent Stafford and this is RegWatch by RegulatorWatch.com. Joining us today for part one of a two-part special to preview some of the issues the vaping industry plans to address during this week's Senate committee meetings on Bill S-5 is Sean Krieger, Vice President and PR Co-Chair for the Canadian Vaping Association. The CVA is one of three vaping advocacy groups scheduled to present to the Senate Standing Committee on Social Affairs, Science and Technology. It's a packed schedule with the Tobacco Harm Reduction Association presenting on Wednesday, April 5th in the afternoon at 4.15 Eastern, along with the Non-Smokers Rights Association, the Canadian Convenience Stores Association and the National Coalition Against Contraband Tobacco. The Electronic Cigarette Trade Association of Canada and the Canadian Vaping Association present on Thursday, April 6th in the morning at 10.30 Eastern along with Imperial Tobacco Canada and Rothmans, Benson & Hedges. The committee presentations are the first opportunity for stakeholders in the legislative process to officially issue support and voice concerns on specific sections of Bill S-5. And here now to talk about the presentations again is Sean Krieger. Thanks for coming on the show, Sean. First off, please share with our viewers a little about yourself and your responsibilities at the CVA. I currently and have been running River City Vapes in Edmonton since 2013. I was part of the original group of people that supported the Canadian Vaping Association. Um, I've been active in the community at different levels throughout the three years here. Um, my role at the Canadian Vaping Association this term has been to provide updates and, and information and uh, a sober second thought to all the ideas that get bantered around and, and make sure that we make decisions that are good for everyone in the vaping industry. Sean, with regard to the presentation, who will be delivering it on behalf of the CDA? Michelle Sinis is going to be giving our committee presentation on April 6th uh, to the Senate committee, the SOKI committee. She's a great advocate for us. And what about the CBA's direct negotiations with the government, Sean? Who is handling that? Uh, negotiations have been through uh, Keely & Associates, who are our government relations firm. We rely on their expertise and, uh, and opinions on, on how to proceed, and it's been as far as I'm concerned, pretty fruitful so far. You say fruitful, Sean, but there are a good number of vapors in Canada who might not agree. They are, in fact, quite worried about the way things are going. Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, and justifiable. Um, when that legislative summary came out and it contradicted the, the S-5 bill, we were all concerned. Um, since that time, we have been in communication with the federal government and Health Canada, and we're very confident that once committee comes and goes, that that piece of legislation is going to come back in a much better way than it went in. For our viewers, a legislative summary is a document that provides politicians with an easy to understand overview of a specific bill. And the legislative summary for Bill S-5 caused quite a bit of consternation in the vaping community. Sean, why was that? Well, the biggest concern of the legislative summary was the way that they worded the flavoring aspect. The original S-5 bill stated that flavorings as far as marketing and naming and descriptions are going to be targeted, which we have no problem with. The legislative summary led us to believe that the flavor profiles themselves uh, are up for prohibition, which of course to anyone in the vaping industry will agree that that is not acceptable by any standards. It is curious that the legislative summary read the way it did. It certainly implied that popular flavor categories would be banned. However, as RegWatch has reported since the release of Bill S-5, flavors falling in one of the restricted categories would still be available. They are not banned. And Health Canada has confirmed this point with us. The restrictions are on the way flavors are promoted and the intent is to limit the appeal to children and youth. Sean, do you read the bill the same way? The way that the, the bill itself, not the summary, but the way the bill is written would lead us to believe that flavorings themselves are okay, but the way we name our flavors, the, the packaging we use in the flavors, that sort of thing needs to be regulated so that it doesn't entice children, which I, as, as a father, I completely agree. I don't want my child picking up a piece of, uh, or a bottle of e-liquid and thinking, oh, look at that, it has Pokemon, this is for me, and then, you know, we all know what happens from there. Sean, how important is the flavor issue in regard to the CDA Senate presentation? Oh, I think flavorings are probably the single most important issue in the bill. We need flavors. Everyone agrees that flavors are a big part of why vaping is so successful for people transitioning from smoking to vaping as a harm reduction method. So where we are in negotiations and talking with Health Canada and senators and everyone's well aware of, of what we plan to present 
at the, the Senate in regards to flavoring. Sean, Bill S-5 puts a lot of emphasis on protecting youth. Do you think it strikes a good balance? We don't want children vaping. It's not, we, we don't want to normalize smoking behaviors. We, we don't want all the things that government doesn't want as well. We just want to be able to still offer our products to uh, age of majority smokers. They're looking for a less harmful way to, to do what they've been doing for years after failing with pharm the pharmaceutical route. Sean, as the bill stands now, could you point out an area where the industry feels like they got a win? As an organization, we firmly believe in regulation. We've said that since day one, that this industry requires legislation. We've had some wins, if you will, in the legislation that's come forward so far in that vaping products are indeed its own category. Yes, it's under the Tobacco Act and we would love it if it wasn't, but it is but it's its own column in the Tobacco Act, which gives us the ability to negotiate regulations that are just for us, that aren't a derivative of the tobacco legislations that are currently in place. Sean, in part two of our discussion, we'll dive into the no comparisons issue and criminal penalties. Let me ask you now though, about the presentation on Thursday, is the CVA gonna be given enough time to handle all of the issues you wanna address? We only have the seven minutes to speak. So it's nice that we have us as well as ACT at the table at the same time. So we actually get that 14 minutes to get all of our points across, including the the manufacturing process, which we believe ECTA is, is the champion of that, that kind of realm in the industry now and moving forward. I'm glad you brought up manufacturing, Sean, since Canada has such a robust e-liquid industry. How do you think producers should prepare for the new regs? Let's get rid of the beautiful color, the bright colors, and that could be anything that could be contrived as targeting youth, which of course, as I mentioned earlier, it's not what we're doing at all. Let's go with not necessarily plain packaging, but let's go with simpler packaging. No, no balloons on it. Let's not call cotton candy cotton candy. We can be we can be clever with our packaging so that it does you know stand out in the wall of all the of all the e-liquid but doesn't stand out to, to regulators that are looking through nanny glasses, if you will. Sean, do you think regulators are being overprotective then with Bill S-5? When you read that bill, there's a lot of head scratching moments, no matter what side of the fence you're sitting on, they're going, why would they put that in there? I look at Bill S-5 as written right now as the starting point of this bill. And as, as most bills that go through this process, they're always swinging for the fences, but they, they're well aware that they're going to have to make some concessions to get this into a livable piece of legislation. And that's kind of where we're at right now, is we've been given this bill that many have, and including myself, have huge problems with. Um, so we're going we're gonna to do our due diligence and, and make sure that this gets molded into a, into a legislation that everyone can live with. Well, that's it for this special edition of RegWatch. Stay tuned for part two coming out tomorrow. In the meantime, before you head off, please like us on Facebook and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. For RegulatorWatch.com, I'm Brent Stafford.